Good morning, boys and girls. Here we are, getting ready for the Christmas season already. And what I'm going to do today, we're going to be talking about the Christmas story from Jesus' calling book, okay? And it's going to tell from the very beginning to the end of what's going on. And then the next few Sundays, I will pick a different story about Christmas time, and we'll study it more. But today, we're going to read this book, okay? But before we start, we need to open with prayer, don't we? Okay, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the wonderful Christmas story, how the prophets told that Jesus would come, and Lord, what he would do for us. Be with these young people, Lord. Just bless them. Help them have such a great day. In your precious Son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You know, and, and this is, it talks about how it was told in the Old Testament before Christ, how Christ was going to come and that he was going to be the Messiah, that he was God's son, that he means Emmanuel, God with us. That's what he means. And that his name was told to be Jesus when the angel came to Mary. Nothing is by mistake or it just happened. It was planned out because God loved us so much. So let's get on with this story, okay? And the Christmas story began a long, long, long time ago. And before the angel told Mary she would have God's son, before the shepherds ever saw the angels and the wise men saw the stars, God had a plan for Christmas. From the beginning of time, God's plan was Jesus. And in Colossians, which is the New Testament, it says Christ was there before anything was made and all things continue because of him. And on each one of these pages, Jesus says something. And this is what Jesus says on this page. I made everything, including you. Long before you were born, I thought of you and I love you. So here it is. How Jesus was with God at the very beginning. Remember, we talked about the creation. Jesus has always been. Isn't that great? And then God told Abraham, count the stars. That's how many children will come from your family. Now, when Abraham and Sarah were very, very, very old, they did have a son, a baby boy, and they named him Isaac. Then Isaac had a son, and then Isaac's son had a son, until Abraham's family grew all the way to Jesus. Jesus is part of that line. Now, it wasn't that Abraham and Sarah were going to have all these children. It's just that, you know, when we accept Christ, we're all part of God's family, aren't we? And in Galatians 3, 8, and Galatians is the New Testament too. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, All nations will be blessed through you. And do you know there's Christians of every nation there is, every tribe, every tongue. There are Christians. God made sure of that. And that's what he was talking about, is you are going to be the father of many nations. Abraham couldn't understand all that then, but now that he's in heaven with God, he knows. And we get to see it, because we have the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you know, if you watch a video of Amazing Grace right now, it's called 52 Countries. And 52 countries sing Amazing Grace, and they sing it in their own language. It is such a beautiful video. So if you can get your parents to get you online on YouTube, look up 52 countries singing Amazing Grace. Beautiful. Take your breath away, and you'll realize that the Word of God is being preached everywhere. Places you wouldn't even think. It's so wonderful. And Jesus said from this page, I am the light of the world. Everyone who trusts me as Savior is adopted into my family, my royal family. And that's what I was talking about. When we accept Christ into our hearts, remember we do our hearts, then we become brothers and sisters with Christ. And that means we're part of the family. And that's why you hear all the time in church, we're part of the family of God, because we are. When he comes to live in us, we've accepted him we are now brothers and sisters to Jesus. Isn't that wonderful that he thought that much of us? So here's Abraham. He couldn't count the stars. There's too many. We could never count every star. And that's how many people that know him. Isn't that wonderful? A number we can't number, right? And even in the Old Testament before Jesus, God's prophets 
talked about a Savior who was going to come, and he was going to save everyone who believed in him. And you know what? Everything happened just like these prophets were telling the people. Now, Isaiah is the Old Testament, and in chapter 9, verse 6, this is what he tells the people. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And you know, we do that in most of our Christmas plays. We say that verse. Before Jesus was ever born, Isaiah told him there was someone coming, the Messiah. And Jesus says, I have come and I came and I'm still coming back the second time to save everyone who trusts in me. And nothing, nothing can exchange, can exchange this amazing plan. That's how much God loves us. He was never going to change his mind about us. He always has loved us, and he still loves us, and he's going to love us forever. Isn't that wonderful? So here's the prophets telling them, oh, guess what? There is someone coming. Oh, Prince of Peace is coming. And one day we will live in heaven, and there'll be nothing but peace. Isn't that wonderful to look forward to? Now, God's ways and timings are always perfect. Now, our ways aren't, and our timing's not. But God's ways and timing is always perfect. And God picked just the right time for Jesus to come to the earth. And he picked the right parents. Now, who is, we talk about her all the time, who is Jesus' mother? I know you know it. Tell me. Yes, Mary. Mary was, right? That's right. And do you remember last year we really, really studied about the angel that came to tell her that she was going to have a child? You remember that angel's name? Come on, it starts with a G. Gabriel. That's right. He came and told Mary, you will have a son. And it's going to be God's son. It's through the Holy Spirit. And he said, you will have a baby boy. And his name is to be Jesus. Because nothing with God is impossible. Now, of course, she didn't understand it. She was a good girl. And she was not married yet. But that's when the angel was trying to help her be calm and say, it's not from a man. It's from the Holy Spirit. It's God's son. And she accepted that. And she said she would do whatever God told her to do. The handmaiden of God, she would do what God said. And Matthew, which is the New Testament, chapter 1, verse 23 says, The virgin will be pr pregnant. She will have a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. And that means God is with us. Emmanuel means God with us. And Jesus is always with us, isn't he? He lives in our hearts, doesn't he? And Jesus says, I want you to remember that I am Emmanuel. And I want you to remember that Emmanuel, Emmanuel means God with us. I get a little tongue twisted, don't I? So it says, be happy because I have come into the world and I have given you new life. So here she is, the angel Gabriel had been talking to her and telling her what was going to happen. And you know what? I would have been scared too, and I prayed that I would have said, okay, God, whatever you say, but a lot of us will say, Lord, I can't do that. Well, guess what? She had a fiancé, Joseph. They had not been married yet. So when he found out she was pregnant, he was like, what's going on? Is she not the good girl I thought she was? So that night he went to bed, and guess what? An angel of the Lord appeared to Mary's fiancé, Joseph, in a dream. Joseph, Joseph, the angel said, don't be afraid. The baby is from the Holy Spirit and name him Jesus. That's the second time. First to Mary and then to Joseph. Name him Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. And we know that to be true, don't we? And when Jesus, I mean, when Joseph woke up, he did exactly what the angel told him to do. He took Mary as his wife, and when Jesus was born, he made sure he was named Jesus. Did I say that right? Joseph named his son Jesus because it was God's son. <laughs> I don't want to get you mixed up. And in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The baby that is in her is from the Holy Spirit. So God. The angel is making sure that Joseph wouldn't think wrong of Mary and that he too could trust God. And Jesus is telling us, if you could look through my eyes, you would see how wonderfully I am caring for you. 
I want you to live by faith, trusting that I am with you and I love you. You see how many times Jesus wants us to know that he loves us? He keeps telling us over and over, doesn't he? You know, he wants everyone to know he cares. Well, Joseph has woke up. The angel has talked to him to tell him, don't be worried. The child is from the Holy Spirit. Please, and you know what? Please don't be scared. And you know what? He wasn't. He got out. He said he, he did the right thing, didn't he? Because he trusted God. We need to be like that too. Now, Mary had a cousin, Elizabeth, and she was very old. Her and her husband, Zachariah, they were so old, they had given up on having children. And guess what? An angel told her husband, you're going to have a son. And you're to name him John. Now, I know you've heard John the Baptist a lot. This is their son that's going to be born. And John would spend his whole life telling everybody about one person that was coming that could save them from their sins. And he kept saying, what? What did we study about John the Baptist? Repent, repent, turn from your sins. Remember we said sin is when you make mistakes and you don't want to do it again. You ask God to help you not do it and you turn from it, don't you? So John went about telling everybody that the Messiah was coming, the Son of God, and that was Jesus. And Malachi, it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And that's what John was known as, the messenger. He was preparing the way for Jesus to come. So beautiful. God had everything worked out. So here's where John is born. And you know what? A lot of people asked him, especially the priests and all, they were worried, is he the Messiah? But he would tell them, no, I'm just preparing the way. And you know what? We prepare the way for other people to see Jesus in us every day, don't we? And just before Mary is about to have her baby, Joseph had to travel to his hometown, Bethlehem, because of taxes. They had to go and be taxed. And we remember, we have songs about Bethlehem, don't we? And that is Jesus' hometown. My hometown is Montgomery. I was born in Montgomery and lived in Raymer. His hometown is Bethlehem. And guess what? We hear it every year at Christmas. There was no room for them at the inns, were there? All the inns were filled up because everybody had to come there to be taxed. So they had nowhere to go. And finally, one innkeeper said, well, you can stay in the stable. Now, the stable is like a barn. It's where the animals are kept. You know, we paint pretty pictures of that stable. But if you've ever been in a barn, you know it smells like the animals, smells like hay. And it can be clean, but it's not real clean for a baby to be born in it. But that's where God chose for Jesus to be born. And you know why? God wanted everybody to know that Jesus came from all, he came for all people, not just for the rich or the ones who have a lot of knowledge. He came from the lowest, poorest person to the highest person. To Jesus, everybody's the same. He loves everybody the same. He does. Isn't that wonderful? God doesn't have favorites. We're all his favorites. Isn't that wonderful? We are all God's favorites. So wonderful. And so in the stillness of the night, Jesus was born. And that's God's gift to us at Christmas. The one who would save the world that went to the cross to pay the price for our sins so we can go to heaven. Oh, it's so wonderful. And in Luke 2, 7, it says, And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And Jesus says, I want you to know the message of Christmas is my birth, that I gave up everything in heaven, all the riches. He had everything because he was God's son to be born in this nasty little stable, to let everybody know I love them all. And we all have the choice to be a brother and sister in Christ with him, right? We make that decision. He doesn't force it. He asks to come and live in our heart. But we have to open the door for him to come in our heart, don't we? So here he is. And like I said, we make it like it's a pretty scenery. But you know it smells. If you've ever been in a bar or if you've been to the fair and you go to look at the animals, you know it smells, doesn't it? And guess what? 
and a nearby fields, the shepherds were watching over their flocks, and suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord was shining all around them. Do not be afraid, the angel said. Have you recognized what the angels have to say every time? To Mary, do not be afraid. Joseph, do not be afraid. Now to the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring good news that there will be great joy for all people, not just you or you, for everyone. Today in Bethlehem, the city of David, the Savior has been born. He is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. In Luke 2, verse 12, this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. So the angel is telling the shepherds, he's been born. The Messiah is here now. But they were excited. They couldn't wait to go see him. And Jesus says the angel's word, words to the shepherds were full of good news and great joy because I came into the world to be your savior. And you know what? We can have that good news and that great joy when we accept Jesus and ask him to come live in our hearts. We have the good news. We have the great joy. We can be excited as the shepherds were and they rushed to go see Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? We should rush to see Jesus every morning. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for watching over me while I was sleeping. You know, let him know how much you love him. He lets us know how much he loves him every day. All we have to do is read his word, talk to him, look at the beauty of the world that they gave us. We see signs of God's love everywhere. Oh, and one important part, the three wise men. They came from the east and they followed that bright star. Remember, in a lot of the plays, you see such a bright star in the play. And the star led the wise men to Jesus and they were filled with such great joy. And remember, they brought three gifts, it's three wise men and three gifts. And it was gold, frankincense, and mirth. And those were precious spices and metals. Great gift. And they brought it and gave it to Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, it says, We saw his star in the east, and we've come to worship him. And Jesus says, Christmas is a time to be happy, to be joyful, because I am the great gift for everyone, not just for some, but for everyone. So there's the wise men. Remember, gold, frankincense, and mirth. That was the gifts they brought. So thoughtful, so wonderful. You know what the only gift Jesus wants from us is our hearts to love him and to accept him in our hearts and to follow him with all our hearts. That's what Jesus wants from us. That's the best gift we could ever give him. But, oh, here comes the angel of the Lord again. He has to come to Joseph in another dream. And he says, you must escape to Egypt. Take the baby and his mother. Because King Herod is making up. He's trying to devise a plan to kill Jesus. He's heard there's a child born. It's the Messiah, and he can't stand it. He wants to be king forever. He thought he's going to live forever, but he did. So you know what he did? He had all the baby boys under the age of two killed. He thought he got them aside, but see, angel of the Lord warned Joseph, told him, get up, get out of your sleep right now and take Mary and Jesus and get to Egypt. And Joseph did just that. Again, the angel was helping, weren't they? And it's because he obeyed that they were saved and because Jesus was saved. And Hosea Chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Out of Egypt I call my son, because he sent his son to Egypt to be safe while King Herod was living. But one day, guess what? Let me show you this. This is where they're having to leave. And Jesus says, Don't be scared. Wherever I ask you to go, I am with you. Just like he's with Joseph, he is with us. We don't have to be scared, do we? And then one day, it was safe. And God called them out of Egypt. Come back, my son. And guess where they went? They went to Nazareth, which is in Galilee. And Jesus grew up strong and wise. And he taught everybody about his God, his kingdom. Because he had a personal relationship. Because that was his father. He knew him. He left heaven to come help us. And he said, hey, I am going to make sure that you can be in heaven with me one day. 
That's why he went to the cross. But he didn't stay in that cross. You remember they took him down, put him in the grave, and he rose. He didn't stay on the cross, and he didn't stay in the grave. And he is preparing such a beautiful place for us. And in Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Remember, we got to ask him in our heart. It says, in this season of giving and receiving, remember, we have already received the best gift, which is Jesus Christ. So here's Jesus. He's playing and he's growing up. He was a child once too, okay? So he knows what everybody goes through. He knows. And guess what? This Christmas, remember that God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to the world so he could spend forever with us. Because one day we're going to all be in heaven. And you know what? There'll be no more tears, no pain, no hurts, no death, nothing. And we will just have the best time. There'll be no wars or anything. It's just going to be wonderful. We'll never be sick again. And God loves you more than, no matter how much I can tell you that God loves you, he loves you more than I can tell you. Because my words are not adequate to really let you know how much you are in his heart. And God's glorious gift of Christmas is for you. And that was his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, I did it all for you because I love you more than you can imagine. And in 1 John 3, 1, it says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And we've got a new word for this month for the Christmas season. And it's joy. J-O-Y. We are to have great joy in our heart because Jesus came. That's it. J-O-Y. Great joy. We're to have great joy. And Jesus loved the children so much. He loves everybody. But oh, how he loves you. From the beginning of time, God's plan was Jesus. And when this book gave you the all the way through it, from the beginning of time, to Jesus is in heaven right now. And we'll be studying more about Mary and the, and the wise men. And let's get rid this Christmas. Let's concentrate on how we can please God. Because we're the gift to God by the, what we do for him. How we love. How we help other people. This week, I just want you to learn the word joy. J-O-Y. Just three letters. Joy. That's all I want you to learn this week. Make sure you talk to God. Okay? Make sure you read his word. And oh, how you're loved. Let's have a beautiful Christmas season. I know it's kind of difficult right now with the virus still. But you know what? God wants to protect us and hold us. And he wants you to know that you are loved. Because you are loved. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the precious gift of your son. Oh God, how great you are. Help us to have joy in our hearts. Be with these young children. Bless them this week. In your precious son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And joy, joy, joy. J-O-Y, joy. I want you to know it. Next week when I ask you, make sure you know it. Love you.